this tutorial we're going to be modeling the M24 Steel Handgranate, also known as the World War II German Stick Grenade. We'll be covering all the way from modeling the object, UV unwrapping the object, texturing the object, and then finally getting a final render of the asset. So as you can see I've gone ahead and gathered all of our reference images, we've got two images of a stick grenade and then I've gone and found a blueprint giving rough dimensions to use for the actual grenade itself. I've also gone and dropped the image onto a flat plane inside of 3GS Max as a reference. It's not perfectly to scale but it's, I've roughly sized it beforehand. Uh, now for the first steps I would start off with is because the blueprints working in millimeters, I would set up the, to use those units within the engine. So to do that, we go to customize uh, unit setup, and then we can set our units to millimeters here. And then to change the grid, we go into system unit setup, and then we can set that up here into millimeters. So the first thing I want to start off with is the handle itself. So I'm going to create a cylinder S to snap. It's in the center of our grid. We're just going to make a rough shape and then we're going to go to the parameters on the right side. And we can adjust to what we need. So we know that the stick handle at its widest point is 36 millimeters. So we're going to change the radius to match that. 36 and we know the height is 350 or if I'm going to start off with just modeling a stick to keep that separate and we know the metal casing on the top is 78 so do some quick maths we know that the handle needs to be 272 millimeters long so let's quickly do that now Two, seven, two. Now the first step we're going to do is convert this to an edible poly so we can start working on. Next thing is we want to create these indents here. So we're going to go on edge select. Alt X to make it uh, clear. We press U. We go to orthographics mode. We can roughly move this first edge to where it begins to go thinner. We'll get this second edge and bring it to its finished point. And then we can bring that in. And again, this one. Just gonna match the image behind. Bring this up and make this a little bit thinner so that open metal casing can fit around. And again, you can see there's a screw cap on the end, so I'm actually going to insert a cut. Swift loop, shall I say? Roughly about here. And then I want to bring this in. Like so. I'll go back to active mode. There's her stick. Stick part of the grenade. 
So we don't need this up here, that'll just take up extra texture space later on. Same with the lower edge. I'm actually going to change the material to a grey because it's easier for me to look at. And then this one to black, that means when I'm not on there. I think it's easier to see so that's what I'm going to work with, with the grey colour with the black edges. Okay, now we've got this, we need to do, I think I'm going to start with a cap at the end, so I think the best way to do that is to select here, we're going to steal these, so we hold shift, drag down to duplicate those faces, so we want them to be their own separate, I'm going to call this screw cap. this, go on to here, I'm going to make a little bit bigger, cool. Now you'll notice we delete the face on the bottom, so to fix up we'll click edge select, or border select, and then on edit borders, cap. And then also we'll want to fix this because that's Normally, generally, you want to work in quads. So, having a big 12 plus sided object is good. So, we'll insert. And now we want again. And then we're going to collapse edges. The reason I didn't just do the one collapse is because when I shot this edge, I'll show you an example. It gives me a, lot, a much smoother result. Anyway, so that's the base done. Now we want to fix this edge so we'll just hold shift and shrink it down and it'll create faces coming inwards and then there's a, the basic shape by cap it's got these screw indents on a reference oh, oh, burn. we're going to create some of these again this is easily done we will use swift loop like I say it's got so I'm going to do this, it has one larger one, roughly halfway, followed by a couple of smaller ones lower down. And what I'm going to do here, is if I hold control, I can select all of these edges, and then I can use the extrude tool, bring it in, just a little bit. Do the lower ones first because these are actually smaller. Followed by the larger one. Again, extrude comes out more. And then they are rounded, so I want to soften these edges. I'm going to add a quick chamfer. and easy and that's pretty much a handle done now next we're going to be moving on to the boom bit of the grenade the little metal can canister so what I'm going to do here actually we select this model
front of graphic I'm able to see through Alt X to shortcut to make it transparent and it's roughly around about right here but as with before we're gonna duplicate this new object I call it grenade head with and you'll notice the gizmo is nowhere near the actual parameter primitive model box whatever you want to call it so to fix that on the right side we go here effect to the point center to the object kind of like before we want to expand it ever so slightly covers the edge Take this edge we had before, just bring it down ever so slightly. Along with this inner edge, bring it down. I'm actually going to bring it in and up just a bit. That way, get a little uh, position. This gives it a little more. Chamfer, move off this edge, like so. Okay. So, what we're we working with, so the thickest point is 66 millimeters and then 60, so. Again, this is rough, as you see, it's a bit oblong shape. block out this main base so then again I'm gonna to go to the enlarge If your camera ever goes off like that, if you press Z, it will center on the object that you have selected. You can see that on the panel on your left. I'm going to bring this out roughly to match the drawings behind. Bring this up. Bring in. Just a little bit because I'm going to want to round off those edges. You can see it's quite smooth on the ends. Bring that in and collapse. So, and again, I'm going to show for these edges. and then I don't know if you know if I can these you've got these artifacts on the edge so we're gonna do a quick auto smooth if we just model I 
add in a few more chamfers on these sharp edges. Now what you could do once you've completed all of this, uh, you can add a turbo smooth modifier to get it even higher poly, but this might do, it might not do. That means we we'll have to do a lot more edge work and defining where edges actually are. Oh, for now, we can do without. And then see on this, if we want this to be smooth. So again, quick fix, it's auto smooth. Okay, so if you want to keep all faces selected when you move over, hold control. Smooth, now if we look nice, gradual change like in our references. So the next thing on our front is there's a rib on this section here. So we will add that next. So F4, go back to orthographic, and view, Z. Then we want to add a swift loop. I'm going to do this slightly differently here. And here now to do this one select faces if we hold shift it selects a ring selection another way to do that is if we select this face in the upper right there's loop and ring and then we're gonna extrude Okay, we have a quick chamfer on the edges. Not so much. This is a relatively sharp corner. That will need again an auto smooth. We don't have faces sticking out. Now the last bit is, we can see there's four nails, and we a sphere or a cylinder, take a sphere, wait, then you pull it, we turn, this up now we want to delete this lower section bring this a little bit closer now I want to attach that to here so to do this go to editing tab Detach, and now they essentially become the same object. Angle snap on 90 degrees. Bring it back. Okay, like down. Oh, also to go in and out of these windows, if you press OW. Over the one your mouse is currently hovering over, you can choose to zoom in and out.
So now we've got this, we want to duplicate. That's basically it. We have a M24 steel hand granata. Um, we're gonna go in and polish it a little bit actually though. We want not very, it's quite low poly still, so we have a bit more wriggle room. I want these edges not to be so sharp. Just gonna add in an extra chamfer. I'm just double clicking and it selects the whole loop around. First part done, you now have a few basic tools, a solid looking German World War II stick grenade. In the next part, we're going to be doing the most boring part of 3D modeling, unless you are crazy, and that is the UV unwrap, which basically means, means, which basically means turning this 3D model into a flat 2D plane for you to texture on. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for part one of this tutorial series. In the next video, we'll be focusing on UV unwrapping, so to keep up and to date when those videos get released, be sure to like and subscribe.